40 year old man presents with palpitations and syncopal episodes uh, that's the hot favorite of our examiner the pulse rate is 200 bp is low and then the ecg is shown uh, this is a narrow qrs tachycardia you can pick up the narrow qrs tachycardia then there's a st depression there is a hidden p wave you can again see the narrow qrs tachycardia so the answer in this case would be a psvt there is about 1.5 large squares separating the r and the r so everybody can pick up a heart rate of approximately 200 beats per minute since it's a narrow qrs complex tachycardia hidden p waves ST depression i will say that i'm dealing with a psvt and uh, since in this particular case the blood pressure is only 80 by 60 uh, then there is no role of any drugs then we'll straight away be going ahead with cardioversion in this patient so this is a spot on this is a sitter all questions of psvt every time there is gonna be a bp that is low the answer would always be given as cardioversion in this patient and suppose version 2 of the mcq says that the bp of the person is more than 90 by 60 no this is not race doctor if the bp is more than 90 by 60 in this case then you would be using carotid sinus massage after carotid sinus massage you can use adenosine uh, if he says patient is an asthmatic the trick trick in the exam can be that uh, in psvt mcq also he can say patient is an asthmatic if he is an asthmatic then you will not give adenosine then the answer would be given as verapamil that can do the same thing and can help in controlling the psvt in a patient yes we'll give a six milligram shot and how do you give this six milligram adenosine uh, i mean when you are giving this adenosine this must always be followed by a saline bolus i mean when you give adenosine after that a 20 ml saline bolus should be given because otherwise it will remain in the iv line only no so after giving adenosine then a saline bolus can be given in the patient yes 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 defibrillation is for ventricular tachycardia i had a very good input there vt it's actually for pvt not exactly vt uh, if it is vt with uh, a pulse we can try even a cardioversion in a patient specifically for pvt and then is a ventricular fibrillation uh, valsava we will not do now because person will be having difficulty if somebody is having palpitation uh, for him to you know you pinch his nose and then ask him to do valsava it's little difficult so carotid sinus massage is better or a face size pack is relatively much much better in this particular question had he mentioned regarding what is the first line in the bp was given as more than 90 by 60 i would have answered as a followed by b and because the BP is low, that is why I've answered as C. So I think we are sorted for this one and most guys are doing it, uh, I mean, perfectly right. And uh, when will we give amidron? Amidron is given in uh, following, uh, since you put up that question, I'm going to just mention the answer. I mean, amidron again, when you give causes hypotension, that 150 milligram of amidron, you give it in a person of stable ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter. So I would request you to just listen to my data in the rapid revision part where the usage of amidron has been discussed. Four arrhythmias, VT, VFib, AFib and atrial flutter are the situations. Okay. Fine. So uh, let's have a quick look at a couple of ECGs here because people were requesting that. So spot diagnosis guys, no history given in this case. Uh, I am just going to do some marking here. This is normal sinus rhythm. Uh, let me use the blue marker. And meanwhile, I'm waiting for your answers. Uh, no hints given. This is going to be like a, a P wave. Then we are having a QRS complex. Right. Then you can see the T wave coming up. That is T. And uh, then I'm going to highlight it once again. Yep. This is the P wave. Then again, a QRS complex and then a T wave in a person. So if I just zoom it in, one, you can see there is a tachycardia in this guy. Tachycardia would mean like one, two, and then two and a half. So uh, the heart rate of this person would be something like 300 divided by 2.5. My mathematics is a little bad, but it still tells me it's tachycardia about 125 beats per minute. And since uh, T and P can be seen separately, so therefore this would be answered by US sinus tachycardia. The first ECG that we are discussing at the moment is of sinus tachycardia this is not a psvt because in psvt the t and the p cannot be seen separately 
if you have any issues i'll say the core thing once again what you can see in this ecg is t and p separately if they were not seen separately we could have th thought in terms of psvt in the question also so that's the core aspect that you need to <laughs> yep 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 so that's the main thing that you need to remember and uh, steps in seeing ecg you follow whatever i am saying and you will be through with those ta ta tachyarrhythmia questions that they give in the exam uh, we don't need to pay Sherlock Holmes and try those two minute algorithm that has been discussed regularly. It is the core aspects of lead two that need to be followed. In the next question, what you need to check out is again lead number two. In all questions in the exam, always check out lead number two and follow the data. You will get the answer to the question. They are not expecting you to pick up type of MI. They don't expect you to pick up posterior wall MI versus anterior wall that you follow the algorithm. Uh, we will do a quick recap of the same as well but at the moment we look at what is being asked and what is being asked here is that the RR interval of this particular case is not constant you can see that the RR interval is showing a variation and plus we cannot see presence of any P wave as well since uh, R wave is variable and at the same time even the P wave in this chap is absent so I'm gonna call it a clear cut atrial fibrillation most questions on this topic will talk about an alcoholic who's going to present to you with that uh, holiday heart syndrome presentation, uh, sudden death, and we're going to use race for the management of this person. Now we move to the next one, the next ECG that you can see. In exam, you don't have time. You're getting one minute for MCQ. So if you try an algorithm for two and a half minutes, it's not going to work. They're going to give you a rhythm strip and you can see that this time you can see two waves which do not satisfy neither the height and the duration criteria of the T versus the P. So we are going to call it a atrial flutter and this is going to be presence of sawtooth wave pattern. The highlight of this atrial flutter is that there would be a macro re-entrant circuit in the right side of the heart. Please answer for my satisfaction. What intensity of DC shock would you give for management of atrial flutter? You have to divide the answer in two parts. Would you give a synchronized DC shock or would you give a non-synchronized one? One, so write S sync or NS non-sync. And second mention, what is the intensity of DC shock given for this case? Okay, okay, cool. We will be going in for a synchronized DC shock and the intensity in this case is 25 to 50 joules. So I got very good and spot on answers for that. Great. It's a low intensity DC shock that would be given. Yep. It's a sync mode 25 to 50 joules. Moving to the next question, since you're going to be sitting for INISET very soon, so I put up this ECG as well, in which the highlight is that, yeah, you would be having a change in the RR interval of the patient. Here also you can see that the RR interval of this patient is not constant. Like if you check out the RR interval in this particular area versus the one more, I would say, towards the left hand side, the RR interval is not again constant, but then... Uh, uh, let's let's do it one more time also like this particular area the RR interval has been shown to be different but uh, the key finding in this ECG would be that the height of the P wave is changing uh, if you check out the height of the P wave in each of the three there is a variation in the height of the P wave and therefore uh, because of this variable that's the keyword variable P wave height because of the variable P wave height and the second thing given in this question as irregular RR interval. This cannot be answered as uh, atrial fibrillation because in atrial fibrillation there should be absent P wave. And in this case you can see P waves are present but are having a variable amplitude. So therefore the answer to this would be MAT that is multifocal atrial tachycardia. This is commonly seen in patients of COPD. Either the question will begin by saying COPD or he will say that this COPD patient is being treated from a government hospital. He, he's, he is taking too much of theophylline. Like nowadays, you see, because of hot summer in India, there are a lot of dust storms. Like yesterday in Gurgaon or other places in Delhi, you would have seen a dust storm happening. So a lot of COPD patients, because of that dust storm, will suffer. And they might be taking too much of theophylline. And that theophylline toxicity is the trigger for development of multifocal atrial tachycardia. Every time you get a question on irregular RR interval. Final message for all of you. Every time you get a question on irregular RR interval, there are three things which are to be considered. If the heart rate of the patient is normal, if the heart rate of the patient is normal and there is an irregular RR interval, then you will simply say sinus arrhythmia. 
our RR interval can change because when we breathe in and out, our vagus nerve discharge also changes. So be careful about this fact that if you are getting an irregular RR, heart rate is less than 100, it is sinus arrhythmia. Obviously, here every P wave should be followed by a QRS complex. That is obviously mandatory because we are talking about normal sinus rhythm in this. But if the heart rate is more than 100 and there is absence of P waves, then you will say it is atrial fibrillation. And on the other hand, if he says that heart rate is more than 100, there is a variable RR interval and P wave height is changing. P wave amplitude is variable. That is when the third possibility is to be considered. The third possibility is what I currently explained, multifocal atrial tachycardia. So that is one important message. Somebody said, uh, why we are not doing cardioversion in this patient? You can do cardioversion. Rhythm will come back to normal. I mean, if there is a drug toxicity, even if you give cardioversion, the rhythm will revert back to normal. So why do you want to make somebody endure that trauma of having to receive a shock and then get the rhythm back to normal? I mean, every intervention that we do has to be for benefit of the person. We just can't randomly go ahead with it. So it will be better if we manage this patient with Virapamil. And at the same time, what is the DOC for this condition? That is Virapamil. And that Virapamil will do the trick for this particular patient. Uh, along with that, you obviously have to give Lama. You have to give Lava. You have to give inhaled corticosteroids. And you have to give uh, LTOT, that is long term oxygen therapy. There are four things which are to be given for management of COPD. Apart from, I mean, Virapamil would anyway be given. But then subsequently, Lama, Lava, inhaled corticosteroids and LTOT, that would be long-term oxygen therapy would also also to be used. Pulmonary embolism, uh, doctor does not have a mat. It would rather have, pulmonary embolism is an emergency event and it will cause S1, Q3, T3 pattern. That is deep S waves in uh, lead 1, uh, deep Q waves in lead 3 and T wave inversion present. So any, any cardiac event, obviously pulmonary embolism will also cause ischemia of the right side of the heart. So it can trigger a multifocal atrial tachycardia. So that's okay. But is MAT diagnostic of pulmonary embolism? No. It is, it is uh, S1, Q3, T3 that is diagnostic of pulmonary embolism. And any time if you are having ischemia of especially the right ventricle related to either COPD or pulmonary embolism, you can have a triggering of a... Uh, uh, you can have uh, manifestations of, uh, I mean, the person would would end up with uh, requirements of Virapamil. Uh, inhaled corticosteroids are given only when eosinophil count is elevated. Uh, I mean, obviously, ICS uh, guide to ICS therapy would be uh, eosinophil count. Eosinophil counts more than 300 are going to indicate response to inhaled corticosteroids because in some phenotypes, inhaled corticosteroids may not be very effective. But uh, in majority of cases, as you will see, irregularly irregular pulse given how to approach. Uh, that's what I've explained, Karthik. Just check out the heart rate in the guy. And uh, if it is going to be less than 100, sinus arrhythmia. If it is more than 100 and absent P wave, AFib. If it is going to be P wave amplitude, that is variable. Then it is multifocal atrial tachycardia. And if it is bradycardia, if it is bradycardia, then it is heart block. Mm -hmm.